and welcome to the next lesson in the remote casualty care course. In this lesson, we're going to cover the treatment of snake bite and specifically the Australian snakes. So, as most of you know, Australian snakes are some of the most uh, venomous and, uh, and deadly snakes in the world. Uh, on average, in Australia, we have around about 500 bites every year that require hospitalisation. Um, of those though, there's only about two that are fatal uh, every year. And uh, very surprisingly, 62% of snake bites in Australia, they happen in metro or in a regional areas. So they're generally really close to um, hospitals and regional, major regional centres. Um, we also know that brown snakes, um, they're an aggressive, quite an aggressive snake. And um, they cause 63% uh, uh, of all deaths by snake bite. And uh, in, in all the research so far, there's been no deaths in uh, Tasmania or ACT. So all known or suspected snake bites should be treated as a potentially life-threatening uh, emergency. And the reason that is, is that a lot of snake um, varieties uh, is, is hard to tell. It's hard to tell what type of snake has bitten a person. Um, even certainly for the brown snake, for example, um, depending on where that brown snake is and um, how old that snake is, whether it's a juvenile or older snake, it can vary in colour and appearance. So some people may think it's a non-venomous snake, but in reality, it's one of the most venomous, being a brown snake. So any suspected snake bites, we're going to treat it the same, whether it is a real snake bite or not. Now, we really do not want to attempt to catch the snake. About a fifth of patients bitten have been bitten because they've been trying to pick up and play with a snake. So just leave it alone. If you get a photo or a video, that may help with identification. But at the end of the day, they're going to do a swab to test what, uh, what venom has been used. So most bites occur on limbs, and, uh, and it's generally due to the snake defending itself. So when people say the snake attacked, it's, uh, it's generally rare that snakes just hang around waiting to ambush a human. A lot of the time, it's us coming into there their turf and it's just descending, defending itself. So if you step on it, a bit of a natural reaction, it's going to turn around and bite. So certainly with the Australian venoms uh, and the venomous snakes, they've got a really complex mixture of toxins within their venom. Some of the effects include uh, neurotoxicity, coagulopathy and myotoxic uh, effects. The bites can be painless and sometimes there's no obvious bite marks. A lot of the time you'll just see a scratch mark uh, and not just the two fang marks. Uh, depending on uh, the, the person that's, that's bitten, whether it's a, an elderly person or a really young paediatric uh, or child, um, and depending on obviously the snake and the type of venom and the, type and the amount of venom uh, that's injected, can affect how quickly the envenomation occurs. Uh, it can occur within minutes, certainly with massive envenomation. All right, so what are we looking for? What are the signs and symptoms when it comes to snake bite? So as we discussed, you can have fang marks, uh, but often it's just a single mark or a scratch on the, uh, on the skin. A person can develop a headache, nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, blurred or double vision, they can have drooping eyelids. Initially they can collapse, then they can, uh, or they have confusion. Then it's followed by a bit of a partial or complete recovery before they start to deteriorate again. They can have difficulty speaking or swallowing, and difficulty breathing, swollen and tender glands in the armpit and groin, and that's due to the venom traveling in the lymphatic system and not actually through your blood system or your circuit, circulation system. They can have leap, uh, limb weakness or paralysis. And, uh, and finally, and obviously the worst, they can go into respiratory or cardiac arrest. And that's when we're going to have to do the uh, CPR on the, on the patient. 
So the treatment of a snake bite. And this is probably the most important part. So we're going to call Triple O and uh, get help coming quickly, especially if we're in a, uh, a remote area outside those regional or metropolitan centres. Uh, if required, as I said, if they go into that respiratory or cardiac arrest, we're going to commence resuscitation. So our normal DRS, ABCD, doing the CPR. Okay, it's important, as I said, because that venom travels through the lymphatic system, it's important that we keep that patient at complete rest. Lay them down, keep them as still as possible. That's going to minimise any venom travelling uh, through the lymphatic system. We're going to then apply the pressure immobilisation technique. And I'm going to show you that in a video in a second. Some of the important do nots is we do not cut or incise the, uh, the bite or the wound. We do not place on an arterial tourniquet. And you will talk about arterial, arterial tourniquets later on. Uh, we certainly love them, but it's not one of the times that we use them. Do not wash or suck the bite. Okay, those days are long gone. Certainly don't suck the venom and do not kill the snake for identification as we said a lot of the time that's when people get bitten and uh, and our hospitals are going to have the uh, the necessary kits to test the test the venom or the type of venom that uh, that's been done all right now i'm going to show you a video on uh, how we do the pressure mobilization technique in this lesson we're just going to go through the treatment for a snake bite just be aware that a uh, very important part of treatment of a, of a snake bite is to ensure that there's no danger to yourself, your patient or any bystanders. Not going and try and track down the snakes because that's one way to get yourself bitten really easily. The treatment for a snake bite is going to be to use the pressure mobilisation technique by using one of these bandages. The bandage we're using today is called the setup rest bandage which has a small rectangle on it in brown which we're going to use by turning into a square to obtain the correct pressure to try and slow down the movement of the poison through the lymphatic system. You're going to take the bandage, place it over the top of where the snake bite is. For our casualty, it's going to be just here. And initially start wrapping just around the area of the snake bite. Making sure I obtain correct pressure by pulling that rectangle into a square. I'm going to bandage my way all the way up the limb, maintaining the same pressure as I go. It's important that we make sure we reassure our patient through this process and try and keep them calm and at rest as much as possible. We can also mark on the bandage, if we know where the, where the, the side of the bite was, so that when we get to hospital, we can uh, have um, the doctors just remove a square of the bandage rather than having to take the whole bandage off to do a swab to see the, uh, the kind of poison that we've got. You note that I'm bandaging back down the limb all the way until I get all the way to the fingertips. If I don't have a set of press bandage, I can use any other sort of compression bandage or crate bandage to obtain the same sort of pressure. Once I've gone to the fingertips, just finishing off the rest of the length of the bandage. And with the tail that I've got left over, I'm just gonna tuck that in under the bandage there to secure it and make sure it doesn't come loose. The bandage should be loose enough that I can easily stick one finger under there and make sure there's not too much compression and also just checking the fingertips to see that we've still got good uh, distal circulation. Once we've applied the pressure mobilisation technique it's important that we not only reassure and keep our patient calm but also lie them down in a position of comfort and apply a splint to minimise any movement through the lymphatic system of the, of the poison from the snake. It's also important to note that we don't move the casualty or get them to walk we try and get uh, an ambulance to come to them so we keep them nice and still and calm. All right, and that's it for the module on treatment of snake bite. Hopefully you learnt something and hopefully you don't have to uh, ever apply this technique.